Thank you very much for, uh, for joining uh, this presentation. Uh, in the next 40 minutes, uh, we'll be speaking about Imputity and open source Imputity brokers. Um, at the end of the, the session, we'll have some time for Q&A. Uh, so a few words about myself and the company that I work for. I'm a senior software engineer at Consulco Group, but I'm also an open source software and hardware enthusiast. Um, the company Consulco Group uh, is specialized in providing services uh, for hardware and software uh, build, design, development, and uh, training services, specifically for open source project. Uh, my colleagues and I have expertise in the Linux kernel, in U-Boot, in the Yocto project, and Open Embedded, as well as other open source projects, such as the Imputity Brokers that I'm going to speak about today. So um, the agenda uh, starts with a brief history of Imputity, a little bit of a deep dive in the Imputity protocol. Uh, we won't spend too much time on this, but this is something that we need uh, as knowledge in order to evaluate the open source Imputity uh, brokers that I'm going to review. Finally, there will be some um, um, notes, conclusions, and uh, discussions. Just a disclaimer. Uh, saying that uh, I've selected some open source security brokers, probably I've missed some, uh, so uh, don't be too hard with me if, if I've missed something. Um, I haven't used all of the brokers that I've reviewed. Uh, I'm using Imputity for both professional products as well as um, home automation products um, in devices that I'm building for my own use. The key word for this talk is Imputity. How many of you are using Imputity? And you, oh, that's fantastic. That's uh, really cool because this means that we can uh, talk less about the protocol and spend more time reviewing the, the brokers. Um, I have to say that there have been uh, quite a lot of talks about Imputity in, in, as, as a protocol or as a comparison between Imputity and other um, protocols for communication between Internet of Things. There was even a talk uh, two years ago at EOC um, uh, today, I'm, uh, I'll focus in only on Imputity and the brokers, primarily on the brokers. Um, let's start um, with a little bit of a summary of what Imputity is. It's a lightweight, uh, public subscribe machine-to-machine -machine protocol uh, built on top of TCP and IP. Uh, Imputity st stands for, this is the hardest part for me to remember <laughs> what Imputity stands for. It's a uh, message queuing telemetry transport. Uh, pretty much, it's a, it's a, it, since we are all engineers here, right, uh, I would rather say it's a near uh, real-time communication. Uh, in general, I try to say real-time, but you all know that <laughs> everything is relative. <laughs> so it's a near real-time communication between a lot of clients and a broker. Uh, Imputity is uh, very popular because it has this small footprint which makes it a um, very good fit for various embedded devices for uh, devices with uh, cheap microcontrollers, uh, like um, some of my hobby projects are using this, uh, probably you know it very well, this cheap Chinese uh, Wi-Fi microcontrollers like ESP8266 um, or ESP32 that are dirt cheap, and you can run Imputity client on them. And you can also use uh, Imputity for uh, large-scale industry, industry automation machines that cost gazillions. Uh, there have been several versions of the protocol. Um, uh, the, the, the latest version is 5, but this presentation is primarily focusing on versions 3.1 and 0.11. There is also an Imputity for sensor networks that instead of TCP uses UDP. Uh, Imputity SN will stay out of the scope of my talk. A few important um, Imputity milestones. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's a protocol that has uh, almost uh, two decades of history. It has been created in the late 90s uh, by Andy Stanford Clark and Alan uh, Nipper of, uh, uh, of IBM and uh, company Arcom, that's now called Eurotech. Um, but um, the, the, the big boom for Imputity became recently because in uh, 2010, um, the protocol became royalty-free, uh, royalty so people started using it more and more. Uh, since 2014, it has been an OASIS standard. It has an ISO certification since 2016. 
and this year the MQT version 5 was uh, released. So uh, this is, um, these are the trends. Uh, it's, um, it's just a tool that compares uh, uh, what uh, do people search in Google. Um, and um, over here you can see uh, how MQTA is becoming more and more popular. Th these are just Google searches, right? <coughs> that doesn't mean that uh, people are actually using that much MQTA, but especially in open source, if someone is using it, there are questions, there are forums. So this is, um, these trends um, are some kind of a, um, a, 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 like a, a good mark, a good thing to keep in mind. So um, we're going to do, do um, um, a deep dive in the impurity protocol. Uh, this will help us after that to uh, compare the different impurity uh, brokers that we have around here. So um, these are the, the most important MQD operations, connect, disconnect. Um, obviously, in order to, to get started, everything you need to connect. Um, subscribe and unsubscribe are very typical for MQTD because we're talking about um, a lot of clients that subscribe to different um, brokers. Uh, based on the question that I've asked at the beginning, I believe everyone of you knows it. But there is another slide for those of you who are not that familiar with MQTD to understand it better. Um, and really important is publish. This is how messages uh, start flowing around. Uh, the, the, the role of the MQD broker is the most important. You cannot have a system without an MQD broker. Um, the broker is the one responsible for delivering um, and dispatching messages between various clients. Uh, so all clients have to connect to, to the broker uh, to, to subscribe for different topics. And after that, each client starts uh, to publish mes uh, messages based on a topic. And depending on the subscriptions, the broker delivers these messages to the interested clients. Uh, this is a very, very brief example of an um, MQTD message. Uh, so it, um, it has um, a few key ingredients. A topic, a top, uh, the topic is uh, something mandatory. Uh, this is um, pretty much the equivalent of a URL address uh, if you are browsing a website. In MQTD, we, we've got these topics. Uh, we're going to review them with a little bit more details later on in the, in the slides. The payload, it could be a text, it could be a binary. It's basically the, the information, the data that uh, is being delivered by this message. There is quality of service and a retain flag. So um, just to just to mention on the previous slide, uh, can go back there. All right, this, this is just an example showing a topic and a payload that's uh, JSON. It's a text, uh, a very uh, simple example that we have a JSON um, and call it uh, send as text with quality of service two and retain flag false. Uh, so MQTD quality of service, um, this is something important when we're comparing uh, the, the brokers because not all of the brokers support all of the MQTD quality of service available. There are three quality of services. Uh, the first one is zero. Uh, we're all developers, we know that zero is the first one. <laughs> so uh, it means that the message will be delivered at most once or saying that in other more simple world, words, there are no guarantees that this message is going to be delivered. Uh, if you want to make sure that the message will get to the interested clients, you have to use a quality of service one. The problem with, with it is that uh, sometimes the message could be received numerous times. So if you want to be sure that the message will be uh, delivered to the interested clients that have subscribed on this topic exactly once, you have to use uh, quality of service too. This is defined by the by the protocol. Another really cool feature uh, that I, I enjoy using is MQTD retained messages. So the idea here is that in the message uh, you have um, a flag called uh, retain. It could be either true or false. And if it is retained, uh, if the, this flag is on, uh, if the broker has to retain the message for a while, and if there are a new uh, a new client subscribes, the broker should automatically deliver this message to, to the client. Basically, this is a last known good configuration. Imagine that you have a sensor publishing temperature, 
the most straightforward example. Uh, when you publish the temperature once because it has changed and someone um, uh, connects, for example, from his smartphone and directly to the broker, wants to understand what's the temperature, it's not like a, a request response where you ask the sensor what's the temperature. No, if the temperature was wise enough to publish uh, the temperature with a retained flag, the broker will automatically deliver this last known good configuration to the newly registered uh, client. Um, another feature is last will and testament. Uh, well, it's, um, it's a really cool feature that allows the broker to notify interested clients about an gracefully disconnected client by publishing a message on his behalf. Basically, this is the last will of uh, the client. The idea here is that uh, when the client connects to the broker, it has to specify uh, its uh, last will, the message that is going to be sent. Uh, the only minimum requirement is this message to has a topic. Um, it, 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 if you want, you can put a, a quality of service, a retain, and a payload. It's up to you, depending on the, uh, the logic of uh, your application. Um, the most interesting part with MQTT topics are the wild cards. So um, they, these are three examples. This is a very standard, straightforward um, topic that we have home slash bedroom slash temperature. And if you want to register a client that um, receives the temperature in all rooms, because you can have a bedroom, a living room, a kitchen, or whatever, you can uh, use this wild card for um, the plus sign for a single level wildcard. This means that the client uh, subscribed to this topic will receive all topics uh, that match this regular expression. Um, and this is uh, the multi multiple level wildcards, which basically says, hey, uh, deliver everything. I want to know everything. If you want just to monitor all the traffic uh, going through the broker, you can just use uh, directly the, the wildcard. Um, there is an old joke uh, saying that S in IoT stands for security. You probably have heard it. And it's, um, security is a big thing for Internet of Things. And um, Impunity in offers uh, security on several aspects. Uh, the first one is that you can have um, uh, transport encryption with SSL. You can, of course, have authentication when you connect, when clients are connecting to the broker with username and password. And uh, you also have access control lists because sometimes when you have uh, multiple clients, these multiple clients belong to uh, dif different physical persons. And um, you want to make sure that uh, the person cannot uh, interconnect, intercept uh, messages that are for other users of the system. Um, I mentioned that uh, there is a new version of the protocol, MQTT5. Uh, it provides uh, improvements and provisioning features for large-scale systems. Uh, scaling MQTT uh, systems is um, quite of a challenge if you are handling a lot of, um, a lot of um, clients. Um, there are also improvements for request-response interactions, metadata and user properties, uh, improvements for authentication, error handling, uh, lower bandwidth consumption, and performance uh, on clients with even more restrained hardware. And some of, uh, some of you probably are thinking, hey, what happened to what MQTT4? We had MQTT3, and now we're speaking about MQTT5. Well, uh, if, you, if we have a look at the specification of the protocol, uh, we will read that there is an 8-bit unsigned value represents the protocol level, aka okay, okay, the version, in the variable header of the connect packet when you're connecting to the broker. The value of the protocol level field for the version 3.1.1 of the protocol is 4. So that's why we need to use to directly jump from MQTT 3.1.1 to MQTT 5. So the value of the protocol level field for the version 5 of the protocol is obviously 5. <laughs> All right. Um, so now we will... Uh, explore uh, the um, MQTT brokers. Uh, the, the focus is, of course, on the open source MQTT brokers. Um, the, there are a lot of brokers. We, we're going to mention the most popular of them. I'm starting with Mosquito. Um, it was hard to, to decide how to start, with which broker should I start. 
Well, honestly, Mosquito is um, my favorite for home automation. I use it all the time for uh, my own uh, projects that I deploy at home where I have uh, pretty much a few users. It's just me <laughs> and a lot of clients. Uh, so it's, um, I really enjoy it because it's a, a lightweight um, uh, MQTT broker. It's free and open source. Um, it, it supports um, MQTT protocol versions 3.1 and 3.11. Um, I think that there is a work in progress for uh, MQTT 5, but at the moment it's not supported. The good thing is that uh, it supports WebSocket. So a few years ago it was not supporting them very well, but at the moment it works really great. Um, at the end of the presentation, uh, I've prepared a small demo. I wanted to show you something. I'll show you how the WebSockets work. Uh, I will either show them or there will be an epic fail, so stay tuned. <laughs> it's, uh, Mosquito is available for uh, uh, pretty much uh, any operating system out there. Uh, it, you can install it on um, Windows, on FreeBSD, on Mac OS, and of course on Google Linux distributions. I'm uh, using it uh, on Linux. I'm a, I'm a Linux person. Um, the cool thing about it is that um, there are simple command lines that come with uh, Mosquito, especially if you're using um, Mosquito on a package-based Linux distribution. Uh, they, they come uh, automatically with the installation. You have Mosquito pub and sub, which are very simple clients, which allows you to publish and subscribe for topics just to, to test that the system is properly set up and everything is working. Uh, the cool thing is that even if you're using another broker, you can still take the advantage of these simple clients just to save you some time because they're a common line, um, common line um, imputed clients, really easy to use. Um, I forgot to mention something actually. When we're doing this um, walkthrough through the different um, open source um, uh brokers, uh, we will have pretty much two slides. The first slide is the general information about, um, about the broker like this one here. And on the next slide, we have the push because we're speaking about open source and it's really important to see who's, who's behind this project, uh, how, how many contributors are there, uh, is, it, is it an active product or not. Um, the, the data here is basically a research that I have done in the, in the past uh, few days. I've been preparing this presentation primarily in the evening, so you see different dates <laughs> over there, but it's just to, to get the impression of what's going on behind the project. So Mosquito, the push of Mosquito, it's uh, created by Roger Light in uh, 2010. It's, uh, it's, been, uh, uh, it's been out for a while there. If you remember, this is the same year when uh, MQTT was uh, published uh, royalty-free as a protocol. At the moment, it's a project of the IoT Eclipse uh, Foundation. The Eclipse Foundation has a department uh, looking after Internet of Things. They are hosting and um, uh, providing infrastructure for a lot of very interesting um, open source pro uh, products, including Mosquito, as well as uh, some clients and uh, uh, other um, uh, tools uh, uh, related to MQTT. Um, since this year, uh, I, I read a release that the creator of uh, Mosquito has joined a, a company, um, and this way, uh, the, the, this, this should um, uh, push forward the development of the protocol. Um, the, the source code is available at GitHub under dual license. Um, there is a, a license uh, for Eclipse pu public license as, as well as Eclipse distribution license. Um, as of the beginning of this month, there were uh, 56 uh, contributors, more than a thousand commits, and most of these commits were from the author. You can, uh, you can see the, the data here. Uh, there are uh, 24 releases and there is a current stable release 1.5.3. So the next um, MQTT broker that I would like to review is uh, Mosca. Uh, this one is particularly impressive for me because it's uh, written in JavaScript and Node.js. Uh, Node.js is um, very convenient for, um, uh, for uh, near real-time communication because of the asynchronous na uh, nature of the whole of the whole platform. Uh, so Mosca can be used as a standalone uh, MQTT broker or it can be embedded in an, another uh, Node.js application. It supports, um, ag again, uh, protocol versions 3.1 and 3.1.1. Uh, there is a support for WebSockets and keep in mind that it supports quality of service 0 and 1. If you remember from the uh, slide at the beginning, I uh, 
a quality of service two means that uh, the message will be delivered once and only once. So this is um, this seems not to be supported in Moscow based on my research. Moscow is available pretty much on any uh, platform on, you can run Node.js. That's the cool part about it. So you can use it on Microsoft Windows, with Mac OS, on, a, on GNU Linux distributions. Um, so the, the pools of the project again, it's available in GitHub. Most of these open source uh, brokers are available with GitHub. It's not a surprise GitHub is being a de facto industry standard for, um, for open source projects. Um, it, it has been started five years ago by Matteo Colina. There are, again, 56 contributors, almost 1,000 commits. Uh, this is a little bit outdated, so probably <laughs> they, they have made new commits in the, in the last two weeks. Uh, again, most of the commits are by the author. Um, there are a lot of releases, and the latest stable version is uh, from this year. There, there's a good push of, um, of this, uh, this project. Um, how many of you are using Node.js? Okay, not so, not so many of you. So um, Node.js is uh, having this, uh, maybe I should say notorious, <laughs> uh, North uh, Package Manager, NPM, and um, this is pretty much the tool that allows you to install third-party open source packages for Node.js. And um, they have this website, npm.js, on which you can see, um, you can just browse to see what people have published. Uh, Mosca is available there, and it's one of the very popular um, uh, popular um, packages. It has been download, downloaded at above 2,000 uh, times per, per week. This is an average statistics that uh, I saw when I was checking it. So people are using this quite a lot. So the next one uh, is EMQ. Uh, this is another free and open source security broker. Uh, the interesting uh, part here is, is that it's written in Erlang. Um, and it supports um, um, a wide range of um, Imputity protocol versions, including 5.0. It supports quality of service 0, 1, and 2. It supports WebSockets. It supports Imputity SN. Um, at the beginning, I've briefly mentioned as uh, Imputity SN. Uh, this is uh, Imputity for, um, for, for sensor nodes. Uh, it also supports uh, additionally other, uh, other popular um, communication protocols for Internet of Things, such as Co-op, Strom, and SOCGS. It's available for Windows, FreeBSD, macOS, and Linux. Um, again, it's available uh, in GitHub. The license is Apache 2.0. It has been started uh, six years ago by Feng Li. Uh, there are 35 contributors, a huge number of commits, more than 3,000 uh, commit, commits. Again, the majority of these commits, um, more than 60%, are by the author. There are a lot of releases. There, there is a stable version. It's, um, it's a project in a very good shape. And um, a company, this company, EMQ Enterprise, provides commercial support and services uh, for this open source project. Their business model is to provide uh, commercial support and services so that they can um, can develop further the project. Vern MQ, uh, it's it's another um, MQD broker that's open source and another MQD broker that's written in Erlang. Uh, it again supports uh, protocol versions uh, 3.1, 3.1.1 and 5.0. Again supports quality of service, uh, all quality of services, including web sockets. Uh, nowadays, uh, all the popular uh, open source and QT brokers uh, have uh, WebSocket support. This was an issue like th uh, three or four years ago, but nowadays uh, all of them are supporting it. So here is um, something that you should keep in mind. It's not working on Windows. Um, as far as I read in the documentation, it's because of the usage of level DB code. Um, in general, I don't recommend you to run an MQT broker on Windows if you're developing an industrial solution, in just my opinion. Is anyone of you running, actually, an MQT broker on Windows? Anyone? All right, okay. So, don't bother. <laughs> you can use this. <laughs> uh, it's um, an R project with a very good push. It has been started just uh, two years ago, but it um, already has almost uh, 2,000 commits and 18 contributors. Um, there are uh, two authors. That, that this, is, uh, this is the cool part of this project. Unlike the other projects, there are uh, two people ha that have started it. Again, the business model is very, uh, 
um, similar to what we've uh, previously discussed for EMQ. Uh, there is a company called Octavo Labs, uh, which is successor successor of Erlio, uh, that pro provides commercial support and uh, services. Um, 38 release releases. Uh, there is a um, um, stable release from this this summer. Um, Apache ActiveMQ is a free and open source uh, message broker written in Java. Java is also a popular uh, language for implementing um, brokers, message brokers, and uh, MQTT brokers. Um, the, the, the advantage of uh, Apache ActiveMQ is that it supports um, um, a, a lot of uh, protocols. It's not just MQTT, it also supports uh, um, Open wires, Chrome, AMQP, and others. Uh, it supports uh, MQTT protocol ver version 3.1, uh, which is um, a bit of a problem if you want to use some of the features that are uh, that will, are provided in the later versions. But it supports uh, quality of, all quality of services. It supports web sockets. Uh, it's available for GNU Linux distributions, uh, any um, Unix compatible systems, and Windows. It's it's Java basically. So. This is the, the advantage of Java. You can run it on multiple platforms. Um, ActiveMQ has been a project the, of the Apache Software Foundation. It has been started uh, long, long ago uh, in, 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 the, in the terms of the universe that we're talking because the MQTD as a protocol was started 20 years ago. And uh, this, uh, um, this broker is available for 15 years. Um, it has been donated uh, to the um, Apache Software Foundation in 2007. Um, there, are, uh, there are more than 100 contributors, but keep in mind that this is not a typical MQTD broker. It supports a lot of protocols, and that's why there are so many contributors. So it's not very fair to compare it to the other uh, open source MQTD brokers that we reviewed, just because this one is bigger in terms of supported protocols. Um, there is a sta stable release from this summer. Um, so RabbitMQ, um, it's uh, another um, free and open source message broker written in Erlang. Uh, obviously, Erlang is a big thing if you want to <laughs> implement a message broker. Um, again, uh, advantage of uh, RabbitMQ is that it supports a large number of transport protocols, uh, including, of course, MQTD, but not only MQTD. Uh, it supports MQTD. Uh, uh, with, a, with a plugin, so it's not a typical MQTD uh, broker, but you have a plugin with which you can enable MQTD in it. Uh, it supports quality of service 0 and 1, as well as WebSockets. It's available for uh, GNU and Linux distributions, BSD and Unix compatible systems, Mac OS, and, um, and Windows. Um, RabbitMQ Pools, uh, again available at GitHub. Uh, the license is Mozilla Public License. Um, it has a long history, started in 2007, um, has been acquired on several times. Uh, uh, there are 74 contributors, um, and there are more, uh, three contributors with more than 500 commits. Again, keep in mind that uh, it supports a, a lot of protocols. It's not a typical MQTD broker. Um, current stable release from September, so it's a good boost. Um, HiveMQ is actually not open source, um, but um, uh, the author of uh, HiveMQ uh, keeps a really nice um, uh, blog, uh, and there are a lot of open source plugins in GitHub that are available. Uh, it's written in Java, as far as I remember. It supports uh, MQTD protocol versions 3.1 and 0.11. I, I as far as I remember, he, they have started development of uh, MQTT 5. Um, there is a support for WebSockets. Uh, and the, this, this is the URL for the plugins that are available as open source. But it's a commercial um, product otherwise. So uh, there are a lot of more MQTT brokers. I'm sure that I've missed some. There are some products uh, uh, that are not in a very good pool that uh, intentionally I've missed. Uh, there's, um, this is just a list of brokers that I know that exist, uh, but I haven't reviewed them in, uh, in details. Uh, Apache ActiveMQ Artemis, it's written in Java. It's uh, based on an older project. Uh, Musket, um, again written in Java. It's available um, in, in GitHub. Um, it's, uh, it, it, we, we even have an MQTD 
uh, broker that's open source and it's written in C sharp to run it on Windows. Uh, of course, there is a long list of um, commercial MQTT brokers uh, such as HiveMQ, IBM have their own um, MQTT broker. Keep in mind that uh, uh, actually MQTT as a protocol, the whole idea started from IBM. Uh, Flespi, Joram MQ, and PubSub Plus are also <laughs> available. So one more thing before we proceed to a demo and some questions and discussions. Uh, we reviewed um, open source MQTT brokers, but we also need uh, open source clients. Uh, just it's way easier to, to use a library for a client. And there is this great project, uh, which is part of the um, family of pro uh, products uh, hosted by uh, the Eclipse IoT Foundation. It's called the Paco project. And it offers some um, MQTT client libraries for the most popular programming languages out there, including C and C++, Java, JavaScript, Python, Go, Rust, and C Sharp. Uh, also, uh, there is a Node.js open source implementation. It's a Node.js package called MQTT. <laughs> it's quite popular. And um, if you are an Arduino fan or you just want to make a do-it-yourself product with Arduino compatible device, uh, this is the product that you can, uh, this is the client that you can consider using. It's free and open source. Um, so a few conclusions. How many of you are using the brokers that were uh, overviewed here? All right. Um, is there um, someone that's using an open source MQTT broker that I have missed? Um, all right. And is, is there um, anyone in the audience who has contributed to the development of these open source MQTT brokers? OK. I haven't contributed to any of them as well. <laughs> I just want it to be a fair review, right? <laughs> uh, so the conclusions, uh, I knew that before st starting my research about open source uh, MQTT brokers. MQTT is an excellent protocol for uh, near real time communication of Internet of Things. It's easy to use. Um, it's totally great because the physical world, unlike the web browser, is something that uh, happens based on events. And MQTT provides a good mechanism to handle all these events. Um, based on the slides that you have already seen, there is a huge variety of um, high quality free and open source MQTT brokers. Uh, basically, the business model of all these brokers is um, that they're free. You can, uh, you can grab the source code, you can build it. Uh, but um, the business model to, for these projects to survive is uh, either uh, paid support uh, or um, the, develop the lead developers of the uh, projects are working for companies that are um, intensively using the MQTT broker that they are developing. Uh, it's important to say that um, according to the to the data that the statistics that you saw, and in my opinion, the, the, the majority of the open source MQTT brokers are highly dependent from the authors. Pretty much, apart from one, uh, one or two of them, uh, the dedicated MQTT brokers, open source MQTT brokers, are primarily being developed by their author. So, uh, these people are really important. Uh, when we're speaking about open source, uh, the best example for an open source product is uh, the Linux kernel, when, where you have uh, so many companies and, um, and individuals contributing to the Linux kernel. But with the MQTT brokers, it's a little bit different because these projects are, don't, don't have the impact of a Linux kernel. They have smaller communities, and the leaders are really important. So if you have a favorite MQT, open source MQTT broker, make sure that the leader is in good health. <laughs> um, most popular uh, languages for implementing MQTT. The, the, here is comes the surprise, at least for me. I didn't expect that uh, when I started uh, doing this research uh, before the conference. Uh, obviously, Erlang is the most uh, uh, important, uh, uh, the most popular language for implementing uh, MQTT brokers, based on the, uh, the few that we reviewed. Of course, Java and C are also very popular. And the good things um, is that all reviewed open source MQTT brokers run on GNU Linux distributions. So now we have um, 10 minutes. Uh, in these 10 minutes, I'll do a uh, demo. We'll see if it works or there will be an epic fail. Um, and after that, there will be some time for questions. So just a second now.
Um, I wanted to show you something because uh, statistics are uh, a bit boring, I know. And um, I have created a, it, I cannot show you all of these uh, MQTT brokers. I have used them, some of them, but not all of them. So what I created here is, um, is a very simple demonstration how uh, MQTT works. I see that most of you have already, are already familiar with MQTT, so probably it won't be so impressive, <laughs> but anyway, something to show. Um, I have created a very simple uh, web page. I can actually have a look at it. Uh, very simple HTML5 web page that um, it uses the Paco project uh, fr from the nodes. It's, it's this open source uh, uh, MQTT client library for JavaScript to be used in the browser. Um, I said um, I'm using Node.js. I want to be modern, you know. So I've installed this HTTP server um, Node.js package to, to run to, to run the, the website that I've created. It's just a single page. All right, this is it. So here um, I will I'll subscribe. The, these are the tools that I've told you are, that are very convenient and come, come with Mosquito. So here I'm subscribing um, to, to, the, uh, to the Mosquito broker. It's, um, it's working here on my machine. I'm an Ubuntu user. How many of you are Linux users actually? Okay. Oh, oh man, the, the, the year of the Linux on desktop has come. <laughs> we've got big news. Uh, so like it or not, we've got system, system D. I'm actually pretty fine with it. I kind of like it. Um, here is the broker that's uh, running. By default, uh, Mosquito uh, comes uh, with uh, disabled WebSocket, so we need to, to configure it. I've already done that, but just for, for the demo to show it. Show it. So this is, uh, this is the default uh, configuration of Mosquito. It's very straightforward, easy to configure it. That's why I like it. Um, so there is a confd folder where uh, we have a readme. And according to the readme, I have placed a file called websockets.conf, um, which says that we need um, this listener on a websocket. So basically what's happening here is that this web page is connected on this port because this is the port for the websockets. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, so this is the port for, um, for the websocket. The web page has been connected to it. And uh, this one is connected to, to the other port. So now, um, well, basically the idea here, I, I've been using this simple page to turn on off uh, lights and to um, and to, to report temperature and humidity with real sensors, but uh, I will act like the sensor. Uh, sorry, problems with the HDMI. So, okay, when we press the button, you, you see here we're just um, uh, changing the state. Um, we're <laughs> I told you it could be an epic fail. <laughs> uh, this is the curse of the demo. Everything was working before that. Um, so um, w when we press the buttons, um, the web page um, sends an um, uh, MQTT message that is a text message uh, containing JSON, which just state true and false. So here, let, let us start publishing something. Uh, I don't remember the exact command, so it would be easier to do it like this. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, as you can see in your real-time communication, um, the, the broker has distributed um, this message to the uh, web page. Obviously, the web page has uh, uh, subscribed for this topic. I can also, um, I can also send uh, the humidity. What was that? All right, here it is. And um, so the, um, the web page has been subscribed particularly for this topic. So if we change the topic to, for example, K, you see nothing happens here, but it was received here. 
let, let me show it once again. I'll set the humidity to 100%. Nothing is going to happen in the web page because it's another topic. And here, since we uh, launched uh, uh, this, uh, this client with a wildcard, it's receiving everything. Okay, so now, oh, oh man. Um, oh. All right, this was the demo, so thank you very much for your attention. A few uh, useful links, and uh, I would like to hear some questions, recommendations, and um, your observations. Uh, and by the way, uh, there is a really nice uh, Wikipedia page that contains uh, information about impurity brokers and clients. There is a, a long list of, um, of protocols. It's uh, something that you can, uh, you can visit. Yes? Um, I think there is some mic somewhere. Um, just ah. yeah. okay. Thank you very much. I hope it works. I'll just repeat the question, don't oh, yeah. worry. Um, so when I started doing this, I tried Rabbit in a few because it was there. I was a little bit surprised to find it brought in 40 megabytes of Erlang. So if that's the only thing on your system, that's kind of quite a big overhead. I was just wondering what the overhead of the others is, and whether that would be a useful thing to add to your summary, perhaps, is just how much. OK, um, so the question, uh, what is the overhead of, the, um, of these uh, impurity brokers? And unfortunately, I have to say that I'm I'm not in a position to answer because I didn't check that, but uh, it's something that uh, it's, a, it's an excellent idea to add it to, to, the, to the research. Thank you about it. Yes? Is there any way for the publisher to know if there is some subscriber coming? Okay, so, so the question is, um, it's a very interesting question. Uh, is there a way for a client to know that uh, another client is interested in particular topic, right? Yes. Uh, so, as far as I know, there is no a standard way as part of the protocol, but this is something that you can implement uh, with, um, uh, with logic within the clients, yes. So you, you can pre pretty much ask uh, uh, who subscribed and uh, get information about that. But, but at least I, I, don't, I don't know a direct way to do it f uh, without uh, writing uh, source code for that. Uh, do you have other questions? Yes? Sir, you said that you are using Ampurity for the home automation. <coughs> so why don't we use uh, like ESP? What is the advantage of like Ampurity over those ESP as a When it's home automation, it's not much device. Uh, so, so the question is, um, uh, what, what is the advantage of uh, using Ampurity for home automation instead of? Instead of TCP. <coughs> instead of TCP. Well, um, Pretty much, Impurity is a layer uh, that makes things simpler, especially when you have multiple devices. Um, one of the particular use cases that I'm using for in my own home uh, is this uh, popular open source uh, platform called Home Assistant. It's uh, written in Python, probably you have heard it. It's one of the most popular um, uh, home automation open source uh, projects out there. Uh, it has very good integration with Impurity and uh, specifically components for um, integrating uh, Impurity devices that support the protocol. So it was uh, very straightforward for me to develop my own devices uh, that I built with Arduino, with ESP, or whatever, uh, or a Raspberry Pi if we're talking with, for uh, devices that uh, we can run Linux on them. And um, it was very easy to integrate them with this system. Easier. Easier. Yes, easier, and um, uh, furthermore, the near real-time communication, the way it happens, is very important. It's, uh, it's not that you cannot achieve the same thing with uh, various other protocols. It's, uh, the advantage is that it's, uh, in my opinion, it's very easy and straightforward to achieve it. And there are a lot of open source components that you can uh, rely on uh, to make things faster in terms of development. A question over there? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Just to repeat it, are there any public um, impurity brokers? Uh, actually, this was supposed to be in my slides, but I had too many slides and I uh, removed this slide. Um, yes, there are, um, there are a lot of um, impurity brokers that are available um, in, in the public. So if you want to 
save the hassle for installing an QTD broker and maintaining it because installation is very straightforward pretty much for all those that we reviewed but uh, you have to maintain it to keep, uh, to keep uh, the system running. You can use a third party solution, uh, th there are several of them, uh, there are several um, free solutions for, for testing purposes, uh, the Eclipse Foundation is uh, maintaining one instance uh, for example with, uh, with Mosquito, HiveMQ, although it's a commercial protocol that they're supporting a free service as far as I remember as well. And there is a Cloud MQTD website where you can uh, subscribe. It's, th there is a, there is a, th they have this package. It's a commercial model that they're offering. You can use it for free for a few devices and pay for uh, if you are using more devices. Uh, sorry, I wasn't able to hear you. Did you say testimputity.org? Okay, I'll just, just repeat it. Um, there is a test server. Uh, thank you for mentioning it. I forgot about it. There is a test server by the Mosquito project called test.mosquito.org that you can also use for free. Um, are there any other questions? Yeah? Um, yeah, another excellent question. So the question is, how can I explain the existence of so many open source implementations of security brokers and clients? Um, it's a good question. Um, I don't know, actually, but uh, this is the power of open source. Uh, it's pretty much, you can do whatever you want. You can put it uh, out there, and it's up to community to decide whether to use it, and it's up to you to find an appropriate business model how to develop it. Because uh, while I was do doing this research, I saw some project, projects that were supporting Impunity, but over the years, they didn't find a sustainable model how to continue this development. Uh, and the other thing is that, as you have seen, especially for the Impunity brokers, uh, they're very dependent on the authors of the product, uh, uh, project. So if you want to create something with a new feature, you have to, and the maintainer doesn't want to, to have this feature uh, in his implementation, um, then you have to fork the project or start a new one. Yeah, another question? How about the message priorities? Uh, Is this something that, like, imagine that you have a lot of data on a big factory and you want to make priority on security. Okay, so, so the question here is what is uh, the message priority if you have um, too many uh, messages? Uh, well, it, this depends on the quality of service. That's why you have uh, quality of service uh, from zero to one. And uh, if you want to be sure that the message has to be delivered exactly once, because this is important, especially for the, the use case that you've mentioned with a factory, you have to use quality of service too. Um, I'm afraid we're running out of time, so I would like to thank you very much for joining this presentation. I hope you enjoy it.